stuff fly through these cases. He knows them so well. Uh, I understand. All right, the first one, item number seven, CU 2022-05. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. This is a conditional use permit request by Justin C. Moore. Uh, property is located at 1109 and 1111 North Patterson Street. It is a residential professional, uh, but is in the local historic district. It is also in the North Patterson National Register District. Uh, just to go through the slides, character area, neighborhood activity center, uh, which denotes the North Patterson corridor. This is the part of Patterson that is um, directly to the south of the BSU campus area. Um, aerial imagery, you see the rooftops of two existing single-family homes that are historic. They are both, are each contributing resources to the local historic district. Some of the uses around there, directly to the north is the gas station. The island to the northeast, you might recognize that as the Julio's. Um, but to the north of that is the old Brookwood Plaza, which is now owned by BSU. And then to the south and west, you have um, converted residences from uh, built 100 years ago. Most of those are law offices. And one interesting feature is directly to the east is a large apartment complex, um, which shown by age, I remember many, many years ago, was all part of this property. Um, and they were developed separately, or at least the apartments were broke off. Site plan and your packet shows two homes. They are proposing two separate personal care homes, <coughs> each of them in the family size, between six persons or less each. Um, they had contemplated perhaps as one facility. However, the state of Georgia will not license these as one facility. Because they are physically separated, they must be two separate licenses. So it is the request for two personal care homes side by side with shared parking. Um, in your packet is a listing of some supplemental standards for personal care homes. You will note that one of those is there cannot be more than one personal care home per block. The applicants went through the public hearing process with the Zoning Board of Appeals last month and received a variance to that requirement, um, which makes them eligible to ask for two personal care homes within the same block. Additionally, some pictures of the property. This is the house to the north, um, the parking lot that is in between that's existing, and then the house to the south. I believe these were used as rental housing properties. Adjacent properties, again, the gas station to the north, um, the dwelling to the south of this. Some of the <coughs> properties nearby, you notice the historic homes, many of which have been converted over to office use. Um, this is the old WALB property. It's across from the gas station. Um, interestingly, that is also a historic building now because of its age. Um, but definitely looks different than many of its neighbors. Um, what makes this request more unusual, as outlined in your staff report, um, this is not the typical neighborhood where we see family-sized personal care homes. And you remember over the years, most of those are in the house within a single-family neighborhood. The impacts that we look at and we're concerned about is the number of people in changing a neighborhood from residential character to perhaps overly institutional. This property is a little different. It is zoned RP. This is not a residential neighborhood per se. It is mostly non-residential, although this property has residential buildings and was previously residential use. But the character of the area is very different than a single family neighborhood. Um, and that is the first one of these types of cases that we have seen. And with that in mind, staff is not concerned as we normally are with the number of people changing from residential to institutional, but simply letting the buildings there limit the size of the facility. So licensing requirements, um, standard uh, building codes will put limits on there. They are requesting one of the houses which has four bedrooms to hold so five residents with two staff. The other one would be four residents with two staff. They are wanting to manage these as two facilities but under common rules. Um, they are intended to be senior living facilities for elderly persons. Um, they have yet to go through the state licensing process which might limit them a little bit further based on the size of the rooms. 
The houses are good size, but they are not what I would consider huge. But the request before you is for two separate personal care homes um, of the family size, which is six or fewer for each facility. Um, so with all of that in your packet, staff is finding a consistent with comprehensive plan, consistent with the conditional use review criteria as described in your packet, and we are recommending approval subject to three conditions. Number one, approval shall be granted for up to two state licensed and fully compliant family personal care homes on the subject properties with no more than five residents in each facility and no more than nine total residents in both facilities. No other uses allowed in RP zoning shall be allowed on the property that are in addition to the personal care homes. Number two, there shall be no temporary signage and permanent signs shall be limited to those which are allowed in the historic district under RP zoning and in accordance with the historic district design guidelines. And then lastly, number three, conditional use approval shall expire after two years from the date of approval if no city business license has been approved for the facilities by that date. And if some of you may recall these are very similar wording to the personal care home request we had about a year ago on property two blocks away. Glad to answer any questions you may have. Commissioners? All right, we'll turn it over to the public. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to speak on behalf of this request? Dr. Moore, I work in hospice, so I appreciate your mission. Thank you. I work at the hospice, and we average 25 deaths per week. Mm -hmm. This is very similar. All right. All right. Do we have any questions? Thank you, Dr. Moore. All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on behalf? Please come forward. Hello, I'm uh, Jeff Hansen, 805 Valerie Place. Uh, I just want to speak on behalf. Madam Chairman, does that include the conditions? Uh, 
That included three conditions. All right, so as presented by staff. Right. All right, and we did have a question from Commissioner Willis. Just say oh, this gotcha. Okay, so that was clarified that Commissioner Graham's motion does include the three conditions. It's been seconded by Commissioner Webb. All those in favor of the motion to approve, please raise your right hand. All those against, and the motion carries unanimously. Good luck to you, Dr. Moore, and thank you for your service. All right, we are going to move on.